Amen. This is a very interesting text to come back to after having been at a week of service camp with kids doing doing service for, for the Lord, right? I just came back from um, Teen Serve with nine of our kids. It's very appropriate that you sang the song you did for the anthem because um, some of them went roller skating for the first time. And I actually have some really good pictures of our kids trying to roller skate. So... <laughs> And the key word in that phrase is trying to roller skate. So, but I think they had a good time. But I just came back from that week where 362 people gathered in Fairmont, Illinois, kids and youth. There were 64, 68 work crews. And a work crew is comprised of at least one adult and four to five youth, maybe two adults. So the majority of the 362 were youth. And they completed 68 projects where they painted 64 houses. They built 15 decks or sets of stairs or wheelchair ramps. And then they did 15 other minor construction projects over five days time. They did a lot of work for Jesus. And this morning I come back to this text that says, Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to him. And Jesus said to Martha, who was up doing all the work, she has chose the better part and it won't be taken from her. Right? What does that mean? What does it mean? But but what's better? Is listening to Jesus better than doing stuff for Jesus? Because who was Martha serving? Jesus. Let's think about this for just like five or six hours, <laughs> right? Martha was serving Jesus. She was doing it. And again, hear me. I'm saying the time and the times she was doing what a woman was supposed to be doing during those times, right? Jesus was a guest in her home. So she was supposed to be serving him. And who else was supposed to be helping her? Mary. And where was Mary? Sitting at Jesus's feet. Listening to Jesus. So which one's right and which one's wrong? Yes. As the kids have, have come to accustom me saying over the past week, they asked me a question and my answer is yes. It's a good question. Which one is better? Doing work for Jesus or listening to Jesus? Yes. Here's some contrast to this to this uh, text we have here. And then we'll get into it a little bit more. Um, Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. And who would normally sit at Jesus' feet? His disciples. That's where the disciples would sit. The disciples, those who were learning. A disciple is someone who learns from a teacher. So Jesus' disciples were people who learned from Him as a teacher. They would sit at His feet and He would teach to them. And they were normally men. It wasn't a role for a woman to be a disciple. So here, first of all, Mary is breaking societal norms and doing what she's not supposed to be doing. Martha, on the other hand, is standing over Jesus, right? It says, let me find the actual. But Martha was distracted by her main task, so she came to him and asked. That word there, she came to. That word actually is the word that literally means to stand over. She is standing over top of Jesus, telling him what he should be doing. That's what that word implies. It, I mean, it gets translated in our version to be nice and neat, and, and like all she's doing is walking over to him and asking him something. But it literally implies that Martha is lording over him and telling him what he needs to be doing. It has no, that has no weight on her service. That's just what that word means. Right? So here we have two opposing things even in that. Martha is trying to tell Jesus what to do, and Mary is sitting at his feet trying to listen and learn what she needs to be doing. So, Mary's listening. The other two things in contrast here is Mary is listening, and Martha is speaking. Is it wrong for us to speak to Jesus?
Everyone agree, this is the right answer. No, it's not wrong, right? Because we're supposed to, what are we supposed to do every day? Pray. And when we pray, who do we pray to? Jesus, or God, the Holy Spirit. In some form, we pray to God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all in one. So it is right for us to speak to Jesus. Not quite in the way that Martha is doing here in this text, but we're supposed to speak to Him. But we're also supposed to listen. So it's a kind of a sticky text. And after I, like I said, after I come back from a week of a bunch of people doing a lot of service for the Lord, here we are with this text that says, it's better for us to sit at His feet and listen to Him. Because she has chosen the better way, and it will not be taken from her. But what is the better way? Is it listening as opposed to serving? There's a movie that was released a long time. Not a long time ago, but a a while ago, called City Slicker. Some of you might know it. There's a brief dialogue here uh, between Curly and Mitch. And Curly starts off, he says, you know what the secret of life is. And Mitch says, no, what? Curly says, this. He holds up one index finger. And Mitch says, your finger? And Curly responds, one thing, just one thing. You stick to that And everything else doesn't mean nothing. Mitch says, that's great, but what's that one thing? Curly says, well, once you've got that figured out, you're good. (laughs) So Jesus says, this will not be taken from her. She's chosen the better way. Or she's chosen the better thing. And it will not be taken from her. And what is that? Is it listening versus serving? Or is it something else? Something deeper? I have to admit, I'm gl- very glad to be back and to hear Ruthie playing and to hear the men singing. It's beautiful. But I'm used to my ears pounding for the past week when we do worship. Um, it's been a lot louder. It's been, no, it's been a lot louder. <laughs> you can feel it more. Um, and they sang some songs that I've been thinking about. Uh, over the past week and, and the past couple days, because um, this text is not about, it's not about serving versus listening. Because, as I showed the kids, right, you can't have one without the other. You can't be all about service, because, yeah, I could balance this on my finger. I mean, right? And it can't be about resting. Is you got to have both of them. When you have a balance in between, your life is going to be a little bit more... <laughs> you get the point. It works. It really does here. <laughs> I did it like 25 times in my office this morning, and it worked really good. It worked. It, the paper clip won't stay on your finger if you don't have a counterweight on it because it's too light to balance on your finger for a very long time. But the counterweight of the service makes the resting or the listening stay in place. It's not about service and doing all service. And it's not about sitting on our butts and listening all the time. Both of them are necessary. Right? I have to admit, and I've told several people, there it goes, it's unbalanced, it moved, it shifted. Um, The whole uh, service thing, the the painting of the houses and the scraping and the building of stuff, if you haven't learned yet, that's not my cup of tea. That's not where I get my service in, right? Those of you who have helped at my house, you know, right? I, I really don't know how to use a hammer. <laughs> That's why I call on people that do know how to do that, to help, right? But there's all, all of us have some kind of service that we're supposed to be doing, but it's not about the service that we do. We're always sitting and listening to Jesus, sitting at his feet and learning from him. It's about us growing deeper in our understanding of who Christ is and us understanding that Fear is not something that should control our lives. Because here's what, here's what Jesus said to Martha, right? He said that you're distracted. Or actually it says that she was distracted by many things when she came to him. Verse 40, right? Mm-hmm. It says she was distracted by many things and she came to him and said, Do you not care that I'm doing all the work by myself? He, she should be helping me. 
This word distracted. This is the only time this word is ever used in the New Testament. And it is, the word is actually para, paraspamoi. It's your Greek lesson for the morning. Paraspamoi. It's a Greek word that literally means to be pulled from all around. To be pulled in every direction. How many of us feel like we're pulled in every direction? Like we've got to do things all around us and all these things are pulling on our lives and, and distracting us from what we need to be doing. We have all these worries and all these anxieties about all the things that are going wrong in our lives. Right? We're worried about loved ones. We're worried about paying our bills. We're worried about... What? What? We're all distracted and we're all pulled in so many different ways. And Jesus makes it very clear this morning as to what the better way is. Because this text cannot actually be looked at without looking at the text we looked at last week, which was... Does anybody know what last week's text was? This is, the, this is my quiz to see who was in the church last week. Ha! Ah, anybody? What? The Good Samaritan. Dick was there. So... It's the Good Samaritan. What happened in the story of the Good Samaritan? There was a certain man who went down along the way and was beat up by robbers. And people came by. And the Samaritan, the least likely person to serve him, was the one who served him, right? It's about us serving and loving our neighbors. Jesus actually tells the Pharisee, you need to serve and love your neighbor. And then this text, right after the Good Samaritan text, says, Mary's sitting at his feet and listening. And this is the better thing because it's, it's not going to be taken away from her. That's why it's not about Mary listening. Right? Listening to Jesus is not the better thing than serving your neighbor. What's the difference between Martha and Mary? Mary is pulled from all around. And Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening. A place where she's not supposed to be. She's breaking societal norms. But yet she sits there with no anxiety and no fear. Why? Because she is secure in the fact that that's where Jesus wants her to be. She can let her fear go because she knows that's where Jesus wants her to be. And is it easy for us to let our fear go? Is it easy for us to put everything into the arms of Jesus and to let Him take control of our lives and to just let Him handle everything? Is it easy? I stand here as one who did, has done that and I can tell you for a fact that Jenny is absolutely 100% correct. No! It's not easy at all to do that because we worry. We get distracted and we get pulled from every direction. But there are some things that are undeniable in our truths, that are told to us in all of our readings. The things, the, the reading this morning, the first reading you, the, that you read this morning, stopped too soon. What, does anyone know what happened? What, when Sarah heard that the angels were coming back and that Sarah was going to have a child, what did Sarah do? She laughed. She laughed. And why? Because she was 90-some years old and she, there's no way that she's ever going to have kids. Right? <coughs> Those of you who are women, can you imagine having a child when you're 90? It's actually physically not possible, right? But, if God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I was at a Baptist thing this past week, so my Baptist is kicking up. So this sermon might be a little longer. So, um, God always does what he says he's going to do. And that is the promise that we can rely on. And that actually is the better way, the better thing, the one thing that is the secret to life. Is setting our fears at the feet of Jesus and letting go of them. Um, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in him. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river. And he will not fear when the heat comes, 
But its leaves will be green and will not be anxious for the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and has no fear about what's going to come into their lives because they're planted next to his living word and the roots grow deeper and everything that happens, it doesn't matter because God is always there feeding and helping you through that time. That's actually what um, Phil Joel used to create a song and it's called Greener. The chorus is, every test we go through, our roots grow stronger and deeper into you. And though the rain may not fall, (laughs) our leaves turn greener than they ever were before because you are good. Right? It's not about things going right for us all the time because life doesn't happen that way. Things go wrong or things go astray from the way that we think they should. But God is always there. There was another song that he sang. He actually sang two songs together, which I didn't discover until I got home and had to figure it out. Um, But one of them is called No Longer Slaves. The chorus of that is, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. But God has accepted me as his own and I can lay everything at his feet. And then he coupled that with this other song called You Make Me Brave. And the chorus of that is, You make me brave. You call me out beyond the shore into the waves. You make me brave. And this is the line that really stuck with me this past week as I thought about this text and coming back here to be with you this morning. No fear can hinder now the love that made a way. You see, this better way that Mary chooses is not sitting and listening to Jesus because we have to serve, right? Jesus told the Pharisees last week, go and love your neighbor because that's what God has called us to do. And he tells us at the end of Matthew to go into all of the world, baptizing and teaching everyone and helping them to understand that I am always with you. He doesn't want us to just sit and listen to him and to learn from him. He wants us to go out into the world and tell everybody about everything that he's done for us. And when we do that, we're going to be afraid. And when we do that, we're going to have anxiety. And when we do that, things are going to happen that we don't want to happen and we have to deal with. But you know what? God is always with us. One of the things we talked about this past week was um, a Bible study. I keep pointing at Izzy because she's the only one that's here from the trip. We talked about, I don't remember even what evening it was, we talked about um, the phrase, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. Right? Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Do you remember what I said? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I said, I don't like that phrase at all. I don't like, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. Why? Because that means that God has orchestrated everything that's going to happen and we have no choice at all all in our lives of the choices that we make or the uh, the things that impact us. That means that God already has everything planned out and he knows everything that's absolutely going to happen. Right? So every that means every bad thing that happens to you, God made it happen. I don't like that, number one, because I don't think God does that. God does not give us more than we can handle is, is not, in my opinion, not good theology. God doesn't give us bad things in our lives. But when bad things happen in our lives, God is always there to walk through whatever we have to go through with us. It's kind of the same thing, but it sounds a whole lot more like the God that I know. Right? Sometimes we make bad choices, and sometimes things happen in our lives that we can't control. But no matter what happens... God promises you that He is always there. He's always there to hold your hand, to walk with you through that deep, dark valley, to bring you out the other side. So choose what Mary chose. Not sitting and listening, but laying your fears and anxieties at the feet of Jesus and going where He's called you to go regardless of what anyone is going to say to you. Because that is the greater thing. And that, my friends is the secret to the truth of life. Lay your fears at the feet of Jesus, and He will use you to do amazing and wonderful things.